Oh, he's not picking up. Can he be? Okay, there you go. Hi, Sam. How are you, sir? Go on. Talk, talk. Don't be nervous, man. How are you, Sam? I'm doing good. Don't be nervous. You sound nervous. Be okay. Speak. How is going? Everything okay? It was okay, man. What's up, buddy? Talk to me. Well, uh, I had the issue today. Okay. Do me a favor. Don't take 10-second pauses between set sentences. Finish your statement, your question. I love you. Okay. I love, um, you, I love you, man. Remember, I must break you. Yeah, I cannot hear you very well, but that's okay. Can you hear me now? A speaker of... Take care of your speaker. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, now you can hear me? No, it's better. Okay, go ahead. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. What's your question? Go ahead. Yeah, is uh, I had a debate today with the Muslim, mm -hmm. and uh, while he asked me a question, I asked him the question. You know, my name on the YouTube is Kevin X Muslim, and uh, it looks like those Muslim has a big problem with this name. With the Kevin or the ex-Muslim? With the ex-Muslim. I have a problem with Kevin because I like Kevin Costner. Why are you calling him an ex-Muslim? But no, go ahead. I'm kidding. Just go ahead. Well, uh, that what he asked me. I said, if you are ex-Muslim, why your name is Kevin? Mm -hmm. I told him that uh, I'm a Christian now. You want me to you know, keep my uh, Muslim name still? But uh, he said that, uh, can I ask you why you became a Christian? What it made you to become a Christian? I said, uh, because I saw my Lord Jesus Christ four times in my dream. So share this with people because people don't know your story. So you saw Jesus Christ appear yes. to you in your dream. Explain it four times. Explain it slowly because now you got people's uh, attention. Explain your experiences, how the Lord appeared to you four times. And how you came to Islam, and then ask, tell me the question because people want to hear. Well, I born Muslim. I born Muslim from the father and mom, Muslim in my country. Then I, I was a devoted Muslim. I prayed and you know fasting and all everything. Hmm. So what happened is led to each other. I came to United States, and uh, I. Became non believer for a while. I didn't believe in Muhammad, in Jesus, in Musa, nobody. Hmm. I just believed in God, but I said I have no religion because I, what I saw in my country, what they, those uh, uh, scholars do with the people, I was so frustrated, I was so disappointed of this religion. I said I don't want to have any religion. Until uh, two years ago, and uh, I, you know, like it was last year, two years ago, it was led to my addiction. I got prayed to Jesus Christ. So my addiction overnight, this long time addiction, got healed overnight. Amen. Overnight, you know, I'm not kidding. Overnight, yes. like can do that. next day, I was. Like Phil, this addiction, you have to go to the rehabilitation, go to the hospital, go to a staff, go to uh, many stuff, you know, to get rid of it. But he healed me overnight. I became a different person. <clears throat> and then last year, around this time, Jesus came to my brain and I saw him in the place it felt like a heaven so you I had a dream much, before yeah. you move on so they can you had a dream and you saw what you thought was heaven yeah yeah uh i was on you know on the uh hill i was watching down here on the you know like it was trees and the river and i saw suddenly two feet next to my feet like bare feet. When I look at it, 
I saw is a robe, white robe, long white robe. So you saw a river by your feet, and you saw someone in a big in a white robe, right? Yeah, yeah, next to me. Okay, a river, and someone in a white robe next to you. Okay, keep yes, on. yes, and then uh, I said, "Who is this guy? Is next to me? Is so close to me?" You know, like in United States, we don't do that. We don't get close to the person so close. You know, we, we always respect the distance and the space. And you were not, you didn't know anything about the Bible. You didn't know about the river of water. No. Nothing. No, no, you had not no, read the I Bible at this know. time. No, no. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I was very new in this and I was on the, you know, like debating and what is that, but um, I saw that two feet and then I look at it, I saw the rope and then when I look at it up, I saw, um, a face was covered by the light. Beautiful. His face was covered by light. Beautiful. By, by light. I did not see the face, but I saw the light over the face Amen. Hmm. with the long hair. And people were coming to him hmm. and were great greeting him, shaking his hand, hmm. and he was like hugging them. Hmm. And I said, let people just greet him. And uh, then my turn comes, I will go close to him. And I knew that is Jesus <clears throat> in heaven. There is no introductions. Say it again before you before you were finished. Did you hear this yeah. point? What I've been saying in heaven, no introduction. You don't need to introduce yourself. Why? You already know who is the person is. Did you catch it? You already know who they are. And the, brother, let me just confirm real quickly your story. Real quickly, are you ready? Yes. This is a true story. I was told to me by a friend of mine who know them who knew the the man's daughter he this daughter who is friend with this man and his wife they were part of the same church her father died of cancer and he went blind because <clears throat> he was a sign painter the week he died she came to the church smiling and she told him the story the day he died this is a true story uh as he's dying remember he's blind he stands up and he says, look, there's Peter and John. So the wife asks him, how do you know? And he said, believe me, when you see them, you're going to know who they are. And that's what you saw, right? Yes. And then guess what you he saw? Already know. And he and he guess what he saw? Then he said, look, there's Jesus. And he's holding a sign saying, welcome home. And he died. So another confirmation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Now continue your story. Yeah, this is the thing is in heaven, you know that who is Jesus Christ is and he knows who you are. Amen. I know you by name. Yeah, he knows exactly who you are and you know him. Well, uh, I was waiting and just he passed next to me and I, I could see his face and uh, he just smiled at me. He did what at you? He smiled at me. That's right. That's Jesus for you. Yep. And we didn't talk. We did not talk, but we had the eye contact. Even behind that, uh, the light, I could see him. Then uh, I woke up. I said, wow, what <laughs> is that? What is the dream I had it? But um, uh, those another three more dreams, I saw it. Um, but one is very like lucid dream. I had it was very real and, uh, it was the last dream I saw him. It was a place that like, it was a dark place. It was like, uh, when they make a movie and uh, it, it was uh, like a stage. You could go up and look at it. He was standing there alone by himself and he had the black robe. Like a Yuda. Mm. 
you know, like in the Star Wars. Yeah, I like that. So he was yeah. wearing a black robe and it was dark. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's and like he had the hoodie on his head. Wow. Okay. He was standing there and he was looking down and looking for something. I went forward towards him and I told him, um, it was a, like a, they want to make a movie, like a scene of the uh, crucifixion of him. I said, Lord, you don't see the Romans come, uh, will come and uh, they will arrest you and crucify, cr crucified you. Mm -hmm. You are not scared. He just pointed down. I saw the cross on the floor, mm. lay down. And he wanted, I don't know, meant to me or human being to pick up the cross. Did you hear that? Did you hear in the dream? Jesus is showing him he must pick up his cross because that's the path of Christ. All, all of us must take our cross and die and deny ourselves. Keep going. And, uh, but I was so afraid of that the Romans will come and put him on the cross. But he did not pay attention to anything. He was just looking at the cross on the floor. It lay down. So that I knew that this is what happens that Jesus ex expect us to follow him with the cross to pick up Hallelujah. and follow him. And uh, another one I saw him, it was real. Uh, I was in the city. It was like in Jerusalem. I went inside the uh, a house. It was the stairs and people went up the stairs and I said, okay, let me go up and stay. I saw the Lord with the suit, with the suit is not with the rope, with the tie and suit, beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's like a movie stars. He was standing on the top of the stairs and he was looking down. I went up, I said, uh, that's what I wish I can kiss your face. And he bent down and I grabbed his head and kissed his cheeks. Mm. That was very real for me that it changed my life. When I told this Muslim that I dreamed about Jesus Christ, he said, how do you know it was Jesus? Maybe it was a devil. Yeah. He came to you. Mm -hmm. I said, devil doesn't make the people to better person. Yeah. He make it to the worse. Mm. And maybe it was for your prophet that uh, taught the uh, uh, devil is Jibreel. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because the spirit that came to Muhammad made him a evil, filthy, wicked, immoral, murdering Satanist. So obviously that spirit wasn't righteous. You're right. Because you know them by their fruits, right? Yeah, you know, like devil doesn't make you a better person. I was a sinner already. Why you wanted to turn me to a better person? Yeah, you see, you, I like your logic. Sin. Let me let me explain what you mean so people don't misunderstand. He was already wicked. He was already sinful. He's already lost. Why then change him? Why not just keep him in that path? See, that's what he's saying. That's that's very logical. It makes sense. But So now those were the dreams. How long have you been following Jesus now? Uh, well, seriously, uh, I got uh, baptized on uh, July uh, last year yes. by my church and my pastor. Uh, I want to, I want, no, it was June, it was a Pentecost day. Oh, wow. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, a Pentecost. But I wanted to do on the uh, Eastern day, but it went to the coronavirus and the churches closed and stuff but it looks like uh i'm you no, know that's even like, better. when i say even better don't forget pentecost is when the holy spirit was poured out and filled the disciples with power to minister yeah. and serve jesus christ so the fact you got baptized on pentecost that is god giving you a sign 
Not only you're born of the Spirit, now you're filled with the Holy Spirit to do ministry, to glorify the name of Jesus to Muslims. Hallelujah. Because you remember what happened on Pentecost? Remember, at Easter Sunday, the disciples did not <clears throat> go out in the power of the Holy Spirit to preach. They did that on Pentecost. So it's God's timing that you got baptized on Pentecost Day because that's when the Holy Spirit filled them with power and boldness not to be afraid of death, to love Jesus more than life, and preach and convert 3,000 people in one day. Yes. So that's what happened with you. That's why that day you got baptized, because not only are you born of the Spirit, but now you're being filled with the Holy Spirit to be a bold witness of Jesus Christ to Muslims. Yeah, that's what I, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm new in this uh, Christianity. Yeah. I'm so proud of it. And, you know, when I became a Christian, I knew that what I'm getting in because our Lord told us in the Bible that because of me, you go under the hardship. Because of me, you get insulted. You can get killed. You can get, Amen. but. That's why he was pointing to you to the cross. You remember in yes. the dream? Yes. When yes. he pointed to you, there was a cross. He expected you to pick it up because that's the message, what you're just confirming. Yeah. Following me is the way of the cross. It's a way of being persecuted, tortured, suffering for my sake, even possibly being killed as a martyr, but not to fear because I will fill you with the spirit and you'll have the love and joy of the spirit that no matter what you go through, you will stand by my power for my glory. That's why he was pointing to you to pick up the cross because he was showing you what's ahead. Yeah, that that's the main thing is uh, that because I'm doing this, even I have not much knowledge about this, but uh, I've been debating the Muslims uh, on YouTube. When they see my name, Kevin X Muslim, yes, they get so aggressive. They yeah. call names. Of they course. insult. Yeah, they they come, I know that, but you know what's interesting? I see you all the time on my channel. I didn't know that you were let's say, Middle Eastern or Farsi, whatever you are. I actually thought you're an American by the name that left Islam. No, no. Is, um, uh, good disguise, man. You're good, brother. I love that. Good disguise, man. You're doing taqiyya. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm playing with you. <laughs> no, that, that's the thing is I'm proud Christian. I love my Lord Jesus Christ with my bottom of my heart. Hallelujah. I'm not scared of dying. Amen. May God give us that boldness not to fear death in Jesus' name. No, I know where I'm going. I know that's what Jesus uh, makes the house for us over there. Yeah. Every preach we do, we put the brick on the house in the glory of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's, that's right. You're building your, your treasures in heaven that no one can destroy. Glory to Jesus Christ for you, my brother. So yeah. now that everyone knows his name, his ministry name online is Kevin X Muslim. Bathe this man in prayer and pray Jesus will make us as bold as him and willing to die for the glory of Jesus Christ. And I'll just let you know how Satan works. Let me just tell you something, brother. I forgot every Thursday at 630 I have to attend a meeting on the phone every Thursday. I have to do it, right? But guess what? It's now 6.30. I'm going to cancel the meeting. Do you know why? Because, again, because I'm a little absent-minded, I forgot today is Thursday. Every Thursday for at least another month, I have to attend an online meeting for about an hour and a half. But I'm canceling it today because, see, that's what Satan wants. He wants me to stop this session. And attend my meeting. No, we're going to cancel the meeting and we're going to trust Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we're going to be blessed and the Lord will take care of it for his glory in Jesus name, because this is more important. OK. Thank you. And and let me tell you how Satan works. I had put my time 610, 610. And you heard it. My alarm went off. It went off right when you were talking about your dream as a way of Satan tempting me to stop the session. But in Jesus' name, he that is in us is greater than he's in the world. Lord Jesus, rebuke Satan, and Lord, bless this session, and Lord, be with me for your glory in Jesus' name, because your will over our will in Jesus' name. So I wanted to let you know that, brother. That means God is going to bless this session. When there's attacks of this nature, that means there's a blessing where Christ will be glorified and people will be convicted. Now, brother, go ahead. Continue. Yeah. You know, Jesus always said, 
Don't come empty hand in front of Father. Let me to defend you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come with the full hand. Do something. Yeah. Let me to defend you. Let me to save you. Let me explain because some people may not understand what you're trying to say and they may think you're teaching a gospel that's contrary. What he's basically saying is do not allow Satan to have a legitimate accusation mm -hmm. against you before the Father. Yeah. Well, let me say this in a way. This is what he's trying to say. So I don't want you to, because I know we got some critics there, holier than thou, fake Christians who think they're pious. Hey, brother, that's a, I, I understand, you see? I understand what he's trying to say. So let me explain what he's trying to say for you self-righteous Pharisees who are holier than thou and more pious than us, and your, your horse is reaching the tops of heaven. Hey, can you come down and, you know, anyway, what he's saying is Jesus intercedes for us before the Father. And let's not make, make it a burden for the Lord Jesus, whom we love and adore, <clears throat> to intercede for us by willfully sinning and giving Satan an opportunity to accuse us. Because though he accuses us, the blood of Jesus is almighty to save us. But still, if we will love the Lord, we don't want to make, quote unquote, his job harder. That's what he's basically saying. So yes. take it for what it is. Don't read too much in the statements and don't sit on your horse and condemn him. He's not saying, hey, Jesus is going to fail if you sin. He can never fail. Even when you sin, his blood is greater than your sin and greater than Satan's accusation. So let's put it in context. Brother, what's yeah. your question? Or if you have another comment, uh, we ask the question. Yeah, this is the question is uh, related to this debate I had with this Muslim. Um, I was, you know, like quoting the name of Yahuwah. Yeah, Yahuwah, yes. Yeah. And uh, he asked me where in the New Testament mentioned the name of Yahuwah. Yes. I'm glad that question was asked of you. Now, the reason why in my comment section, uh, when you because you reached out to me on Facebook, I actually thought, I assumed, you had heard this argument because I have corrected people from using an argument like this. Let me explain to people before I answer your question. <clears throat> you'll hear you'll hear Christian apologists. And by the way, let me let the cat out of the bag. You know who unfriended me on Facebook and blocked my other account? I have two accounts on Facebook. One is Sam Shimon, the other is Ben Malik. And they're both blocked. Facebook has blocked both accounts for now. My Sam Shimon page has been blocked for seven days and I think I'll be free to post again this Saturday. My Ben Malik, 30 days, and I think I still have about 10 days left. I started two accounts so that if one is blocked, the other be free. But say, Facebook outsmarted me. They, blo they blocked both accounts. They outsmarted me. Anyway, so guess who unfriended my Sam Shumut account? And guess who blocked my Ben Malik account? Because I guess word came to him because of my criticisms of him. Samuel Green. Samuel Green unfriended me. And then block my Ben Malik account, Samuel Green. I'm going to lose sleep because of that. Did I hurt your feelings, Sammy? Is the grass not green on the other side? <laughs> May God have mercy on him. Now, why do I mention him? Why did he come up? He came up because he's one of the people that used this argument. Let me repeat something you're going to hear from Christian apologists. And I'm going to warn you from using this ar argument. Are you ready? You're going to hear. He's one of them. That's why I mentioned him. There's another brother I won't mention because I don't want to have that reputation. I love my brothers, sisters in Jesus Christ. But when they do something that's really bad, someone's got to call him up for that. And he and Samuel Green did do something really bad, as well as that ta Takia slut. You know, the guy Takia Watch, Rob Christian knows him. There's this fake who claims to have been a Muslim, became Christian, Takia Watch, who would go after me and Christian friends. And so I call him Takia Spiritual Slut. He's another guy. Be careful of him. Now, you're going to hear this argument. You guys are going to hear this argument. Muhammad is a false prophet because according to Deut Deuteronomy 18, a true prophet will prophesy in the name of Yahweh. He must come in the name of Yahweh. He must know the name of Yahweh. Muhammad did not know the name and did not use the name. Yeah, Takia Slut, a.k.a. Takia Watch, Simon. He's a tool of the devil. He's a demon. Slandering demon. I have no respect for that guy. But anyway, now, guys, let me repeat the argument. Here's the argument you're going to hear. And let me know if you've heard this argument. 
one of the proofs that Muhammad is a false prophet is that he did not come in the name of Yahweh, did not use the name of Yahweh, did not know the name of Yahweh, but a true prophet must know the name and come in that name. Have you heard that argument? Have you heard that argument? Because I want to answer this because it happened to him. Yes, you've heard it, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to mention, so there's another brother that uses it. Let me tell you why this is a terrible argument. Here's why. Now, notice what the brother just told you. He told a Muslim that he worships Yahweh. Now, what did the Muslim tell you? When you said, repeat what you did and what the question the Muslim asked you. Pay attention, yeah. guys, what he says. Yeah, I, I said, you know, in the name of Yahweh, but he said that where the name of Yahweh mentioned in the New Testament. So what was his objection? Objection was that uh, uh, I don't know why he went over there to say that. I know why. I know. But to repeat what his question is. Um, why name of Yahweh is not in the New Testament? That's how they're going to destroy that argument. Did yeah. you hear it? The Muslim told him, why do you use the name Yahweh when the name Yahweh never appears in the New Testament? Where does it appear? This is why it's a pathetically bad argument. I don't care who makes it. The Greek New Testament, the New Testament written in Greek, inspired by the Holy Spirit in Greek, never, not once, uses the divine name Yahweh or Yahovah. yod He vav He. Do you know what it uses instead? Do you know what the Greek New Testament uses in place of the divine name? Anyone know? You guys, pay attention. This is me. You got to learn this. You got to learn this. It uses the Greek word, which the Erasmian way of pronouncing is kurios. Kyrios. Kyrios. Kurios. K-Y-R-I-O-S. Kurios. Kyrios, which is the Greek word for Lord, Master, or Sir. Now, why is that important? Because a sharp Muslim will tell you, well, if the New Testament can use the word Lord in Greek in place of Yahweh, then the Arabic Quran can use the Lord in Arabic for Yahweh. So Allah is called Rabb. Rabb. And that's the Arabic word for Lord, which would be equivalent to the Greek word, kurios, kerius, which is the word used for Yahweh. So if the New Testament writers can use kurios, Lord, in the place of Yahweh, why can't the Quran use the word Rabb, Arabic for, for Lord, for Yahweh? You see the problem? That's why don't use that argument. Now, now our brother here wasn't using that argument. He wasn't telling the Muslim, the name of God is Yahweh, and unless Muhammad knows that name, he's a false prophet. That's not what you said, right? No. Okay. So when he tells you, where in the New Testament does the word Yahweh appear, say, it doesn't need to. Because the New Testament confirms the Old Testament. New Testament is written in Greek. Old Testament is written in Hebrew, parts of it Aramaic. And the name appears in the Old Testament. The very Torah that your Quran says Jesus confirmed. So it's there in my Old Testament. And that's good enough. That's how you respond yeah, to I him. Went to the, I went to the Quran. I said that uh, in the Exodus, Jesus, uh, Moses... When you ask about uh, the name of God, God said, I am that I am. If you want to have, yeah, uh, you can't call me Yahweh, but I am who I am. Yeah. And what did he say in response? Well, he tap dance, like you said. Okay. He but yeah, your argument is different. Him. I want everyone to understand that your argument is different. You're not saying the name of my God is Yahweh. And unless Muslim Muhammad knew that name, he's a false prophet. You were simply using the name Yahweh, and he said, well, where in the New Testament do they use Yahweh? Well, the answer to that, you say, they don't need to. They're, it's written in Greek, and they use the word, kurios, kirius, Lord, in place of Yahweh. But the Hebrew Bible, which Jesus confirmed, which his apostles confirmed, which your prophet Muhammad said Jesus confirmed, because he confirmed the Torah between his hands, written in Hebrew, the name Yahweh appears about 7,000 times. yod He vav He. So it's there. It's preserved. It's not lost. So because it, it's there in Hebrew, I can use it. I can even use Lord. But the fact is, that's the name. 
So your yeah. argument was different. That's how you silence it. Now, let me give you a bonus point. Let me give you a treat. Are you ready? Yeah. Do you have your Bible ready? Open? Yeah. Okay. Go to Revelation 19, verse 1. Yeah, well, Lolo, YouTube has shadow banned me, and it's unsubscribed people from my channel. I've had people say they've subscribed, but YouTube unsubscribed them. Just pray God Almighty, who's almighty over these socialist, fascist, anti-Trinitarians. He'll keep this door open that no man can shut. Okay. Okay, now, guys, here's something that many of you already know. Revelation 19, verse 1. Here, John is in the Holy Spirit. Pay attention before you read it. John is in the Holy Spirit. And in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit allows him to see heaven and see the inhabitants of heaven and hear them speak. So in heaven, what does he hear them say? Revelation 19, verse 1. 19. Yeah. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. What did they shout? Huh? What did they shout? Hallelujah. There's the name Yah right there. Hallelujah. Here you have the Hebrew word hallelujah, which means praise Yah, transliterated in Greek. So it's used in the New Testament. There you go. There's the word. Do you see that? The last three letters, I-A-H. That is the word for Yah. Shortened form of Yahovah. Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah. And who's saying hallelujah? Because hallel means praise. Praise to Yah. Yahovah. Yah is the shortened form of Yah. The inhabitants of heaven. You see that? Yeah. Now read Revelation 19 verses 3 and 4. And again they shouted hallelujah. They again they what? They shouted, hallelujah. Mm. Keep reading. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. You got you read the all the way to four? The four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, and they cried, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Wait, so they called hallelujah too? Hallelujah. Now read verse 6. Uh, verse 6. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of uh, rushing waters and like loud pounds of thunder shouting. Hallelujah. So how many times they shouted hallelujah? Four times in the vision? Yeah. You got it, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's name is Yah. That's right. So Yah is a shortened form for Yahovah. It's like Mike is shortened for Michael, right? Yeah. You get it, right? Pat yeah. is shortened for Patrick. So Yah is the shortened form for the divine name Yod He Vav He Yahovah Yahweh Yahweh. I really want to pronounce it, but you get it, right? Yeah. So that's how you answer the Muslim. You did a good job, brother. Thank you. Any other Thank questions? No, so thank you. Thank you for, you know, I know that there is another people waiting for the yeah, Q&A. Okay, so don't, don't, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me for more questions because we are proud of you, that you're on fire for Jesus, willing to die for Jesus, and may the Lord Jesus sustain you and use you mightily, and I'm here to serve you. Don't ever hesitate. But remember, I must okay. break you. I, I have a, something to your audience. Whoever is the ex-Muslim, if you want, please put the ex-Muslim in front of before your name. Yes. This makes Muslims so aggressive. Yes. You see and the advice he's given you? Scared, but, let me yeah. share. Let me say. Do you hear the brother's advice? Muslims who left Islam for Jesus. Change, you can use a pseudonym, but put ex-Muslim because that's going to get the Muslim attention. That's going to get their attention to come after you. Then you can pray and ask God to use you to then preach the gospel to them. You are a genius, brother. Sir, you're a genius. Thank you. Thank now, you. I, don't, is, I want to ask you something. Know, you sound like you're Persian. Persian. Yes, I'm Persian. Man, I thought about it. because it's So you're from Iran, huh? Yes. Is that why you run? Yes, yes. I'm from Iran, Tehran. And that's why you run? Yes. I run from... Uh, <laughs> 
uh, mullahs, you know. That's like, right. Uh, so you, you're, you're the best man. Tyranny, Iran, yeah. tyranny see, of mullahs. See, I know he's from Iran because he ran from the mullahs. But you know, I'm from yeah. Iraq because I always rock. Rock you like a hurricane. <laughs> Here I am. Rock you like a hurricane. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah. All right, brother. I'm you right. sure you don't have no more questions? God bless you. God bless Thank you, you very much for your uh, whatever you do. You are the worker of the Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, you're going to be with him in the heaven. Uh, thank you, brother. Um, I will be with um, you. And together we'll be with Jesus forever. I love you, brother. Thank you. Love you too. Bye. God bless you. Take care. All right. Keep praying for this brother. What an amazing testimony. Huh? He blessed us. We love you, brother.